Okay, I had given the kids these five problems that I thought they should do for practice uh, for about 20 minutes in class today. So, uh, this is practice for the algebraic manipulation number three test. Number one, how much pure acid should be added to five ounces of 50%? All right, well, hopefully you knew this formula. Amount one, percent one, multiplied. Plus amount two, percent two, being multiplied. Equals amount one plus amount two, and then you times that by the total percent. You have that formula memorized in these mixture problems and so many other problems that are like it. But if your grade is a mixture, your grade's 85% based on tests, 15% based on homework. That's exactly like this. This is a mixture. All right, so I, I don't want to extend it right now, but this formula can be used for lots of good things. All right, amount one is pure acid. I don't know how much, but put A or A1 or whatever you want for letter, it can say X. Of pure acid, pure is 100%. So you could put 100%, or even smarter, put the decimal for 100%, which is a 1. Plus, 5 ounces of 50, 5 times 0.5 equals A plus 0.5. Those are your 2 of, no wait, that was a 5. A plus 5 are your 2 ounces put together. And the total percent of this thing is 60%, 0.6. Put that in the parentheses to show it's clear that it's being multiplied. Okay, now A plus 2.5 equals 0.6 times A is 0.6A. 0 0.6 0 times 5 is 3. See, these are numbers that are nice enough, no need for a calculator. Very easy to do. Now, I'm going to uh, subtract 0.6A on both sides. A lot of people make a mistake right there. You're going to subtract the smaller one. And 0.6 of an A is smaller than a whole A. That's why I'm subtracting 0.6A on both sides. And then here, again, people get confused by what this means. It's one apple minus 0.6 of an apple, or that's 60% of an apple. And so when I subtract 100% of an apple from 60% of an apple, I get 0.4, or 40% of an apple, plus 2.5 equals 3. Now I'm subtracting 2.5 from both sides. Final answer, this one's a 0.5. And over here, I have 0.4a, and then... It ends up dividing by 0.4 on both sides. A is equal to 0.5 over 0.4. Decimals are not good to have in fractions, so I get them out of there by multiplying the top and the bottom by 10. 5 fourths, also known as 1 and 1 fourth. But this would be totally fine. We like the improper fractions in here. 1 and 1 fourth ounces of pure acid would bring this up to 60% acid. How many of you would have had that one right? All right. If, it, if you didn't, I hope you know why. I hope you see where your mistake was in there. Yes, sir. Okay, I multiplied the top and the bottom by 10. Would you agree I can do that? Because if I times by 10 over 10, I'm timesing by 1, but it makes it into 5 over 4 instead of 0.5 over 4. Yes. If you had left decimals in your fraction, yes, you'd have gotten it wrong. So get used to getting those out of there. It's really not that hard. Just multiply by 10 or 100 or 1,000. But if you do it on the top, do it on the bottom, too. Yes. I would have accepted 1.25, yes. Anybody else? Okay, let's move on to the next one. On number two. On number two, I hope you knew that this was the kind you could sketch. And I would recommend saying this is 3 and this is negative 7 being the two important spots and then doing one of those sketches through it, kind of like this kind of a deal or whatever. So let's see how this one would have worked. This is a degree 2 and a degree 1 makes a total of degree 3, which means the ends go in opposite directions. It's also positive, so on the right-hand side, it's going up. It's also bouncing off of the 3 because of that little 2 there. So it's bouncing here, and then it cuts through there. So I was actually pretty close on this first try there. Now I'm looking for... Where is it less than or equal to zero? Well, this is the part where it's less than zero or equal to zero right at that spot. But there's also this spot right there where it's equal to zero. A lot of people don't notice that spot. It goes from negative infinity to negative seven. Most people get that part right. In union with, you also have to include three. Because three is a zero, and this says it could be equal to zero. How many of you would have had that one right? Two more than a spot. Okay, good. Move it on. This one. If you can factor it, you should. So there you go. 4, and you got x plus 4 and x plus 1, all over x 
plus 9 and x minus 9. This is why I pushed factoring so hard early in the year because this is, you know, I can use it all the time now. If you aren't good at basic factoring, you're toast. Okay, now I've got to put those important spots on the number line, the zeros. The zeros are the ones on the top. Those are zeros. So I've got a negative 4 and a negative 1 that are zeros. And since it says or equal to 0 here, they work. The zeros would make this equation true. The things on the bottom are 9 and negative 9. And the things on the bottom are not zeros. They're things that make it undefined. They will never work. So we leave them empty. Now, just to save me time, I know you, I know you checked the intervals, but let's get a, a, I think if I remember right, it was, does this part work? Okay, and then was it between negative 4 and negative 1? And then was it bigger than 9? All right, so then your final answer would be from negative infinity to negative 9, and from negative 4 to negative 1 with brackets, and then from 9 to infinity. How many of you had that one right? That's a good sign, almost everybody. Okay, this one. We tried one of these earlier this hour. I'm going to shortcut it, and I'm going to multiply everything by uh, each thing, but I'm going to know that this one's going to cancel the other one, so I'm just going to multiply by x plus 2. On this one, I would know that the x plus 2 would cancel, so I'm going to multiply it only by x plus 1. On this one, I have to multiply it by both x plus 1 and x plus 2. So then this cancel, no, wait, sorry, no, I already did the canceling. Uh, so this is 2x plus 4. And this is the part where everybody makes the mistake. See if you did. Look in your work here. See if you got negative x times the x. See, this is a negative x. That's negative x squared. And negative x times the 1 makes negative x equals. And this side should have been a no-brainer. Uh, x squared plus 3x plus 2. And then I multiply everything by the 3. So it's going to be 3x squared plus 9x plus 6. Now I have to put it all together onto one side. Now you had a choice. I personally would move this stuff all over to the other side so that I can get it equal to 0. All right. So again, I'm going to save some time. And I'm going to add x squared and add x at the same time. And that's going to give me almost got rid of everything. 2x plus 4 is still left. And I have 4x squared plus 10x plus 6. Now I'm going to subtract 2x and subtract 4 from both sides. Subtract 2x there and subtract 4 there. It's a double step. It's kind of dangerous, but hopefully it'll save me some time. 0 equals 4x squared plus 8x plus 2. And then, if it factors, you got your answers. If it doesn't factor, you use quadratic formula. I'd expect it would probably factor. I'm going to pause. I will record the rest of this. If you want to see it, you can watch the video tonight. It'll probably be a total of 10 minutes long, and you can fast forward to the end. I'm going to pause while you walk. OK, so here's the rest of the answers for this one. Uh, I would look into this and find out that it does not factor. Uh, since this one does not factor, I'd have to go to the quadratic formula. And I would say x equals negative b, which is negative 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 64, minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is 2, all over 2a, which is 2 times 4 is 8. And you'd simplify that down, and you'd have your answer. Now, hopefully, it'll just factor for you. And from, it's a lot easier than using the quadratic formula. Next one, the perimeter of a rectangle is 30. All right, so if you know the distance all the way around this rectangle is 30, I usually like to show that in my picture by going something like that. One side is x. There you go. The area is 56. I usually put that on the inside. That, to me, seems like where area should be. And what are its dimensions? All right, so to set this up, first of all, I would say I know from the area being 56 that if I call this y for just a second, that the area formula for a rectangle is area is equal to length times width. The area is 56 equals the length, which is x, times the width, which is y. doesn't really matter which one's which there. Then y, that other side, is equal to 56 over x. So this side right here would be 56 over x. 
All right, now that I know I've got my picture labeled really nicely, now I can use a different formula, and that's the one for the parameter. Parameter is equal to two lengths plus two widths, and I know a bunch of that info. Perimeter is 30. 30 equals two lengths, which I'm going to say is 2x, plus two widths, which I'm going to say is two times 56 over x. See how I got the stuff in the picture? You can get it labeled nicely in the picture with one variable, and then I can take the stuff from the picture and put it in the formula. So now here you have an equation that involves an x in the denominator. That's why it's in this unit. So I'm going to multiply everything by x. 30x equals 2x squared plus 2 times the 56. Then I multiply everything by an x here. And this one comes out to 112. Then I'm going to subtract the 30x from both sides. 0 equals 2x squared minus 30x plus 112. And we have it, again, this is a no calculator test, so we'd have it set up so that that would factor right there. And once it factors, you'll have your answers very easily from the zero product property. If it didn't factor, quadratic formula will solve it too. All right, that's all I got for my help for you for today. Have a good day.